Hi guys, it is Wednesday, April 1st, and so um, today I am going to go over with you guys um, chapter one from Theology of the Body. If we were in class, this is what the um, textbook looks like. So let's start in prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of this day and for the gift of our lives. And I just ask, Lord, that you will send your spirit down upon us as we learn that you have created us good, that you have created us out of love. I just ask that you will bless all of my students right now in this moment and help them to know deep in their hearts how loved they are and um, what the path of their life is going to look like according to your plan. We do all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So I had you guys watch a video on Monday, and I'm just going to go over a few more things today and then have you fill out some questions for me. Um, there is a verse from the Psalms, Psalm 8, actually, verses 5 and 6, and it talks about how us as humans are created um, out of love, and it says that um, we were created less than God, but yet we're still crowned with glory and honor. We aren't gods, but he still, when he creates us, crowns us with the glory and honor. So we as humans are the only creatures that God made just to love and be loved. Everything else that God made, animals and plants and even angels, they were made to do a job or accomplish some task for him or for humanity. So from the beginning, we were made for this eternal happiness with God. And we as humans are the pinnacle of God's cre creation. You know, we receive our, our soul from God at the moment of our conception. And God is in heaven. He is the king of heaven. He is our father in heaven. And then we receive our body from our parents who are living here on earth. So we have this heavenly aspect to us in our souls and then this earthly aspect given to us in our bodies. And we are a union of our body and souls. And so the fact that God created us with a soul means that heaven is really our homeland. We are not meant to um, be on this earth forever. We're meant to be in heaven with God forever. So in this first chapter, we're discovering what it means to be human, that God made us because he loves us. He didn't create it up. He did not create us because he was just lonely or bored. Um, he didn't need us. He just wants to love us and he wants to share his life with us. And that's really good news. And so from the moment we are born, we have this deep desire uh, to grow up, to be independent, and to find our happiness, right? Um, and this is a good thing. From the moment we're born, we grow, we learn, uh, we progress, right? Um, if, if we didn't have this desire from the moment we were born to grow in, in this developmental, physical part of us that keeps going forward, um, things wouldn't happen in this world, right? Can you imagine if all toddlers refuse to be potty trained? Like, that is not a good thing. That would not be good for the world. And so this, this uh, part of us that wants to continue to grow into maturity and to be um, adults eventually, that's a really good thing, right? And I see this in my four-year-old. She and I get into these cute little tiffs with each other. And I tell her, I say, you're not allowed to grow up. And she says, I am grown. I am big girl. And we just go back and forth because I, as her mother, I want her to stay little forever. But she has this need inside of her to want to grow and to have some freedom and independence. And so her main focus in life right now is proving what a big girl she is. Um, and we spoke a few weeks ago before all this social distancing stuff and quarantine stuff about freedom and you all conveyed I think I asked you guys do you think you're free right now as 12 13 14 year olds 
are you free? And you all conveyed that really you're not free. You have to do what your parents do, hopefully. And I know that you all look forward to that time in your life when you can make your own choices and experience life as an adult. And we also spoke about how with more freedom comes more responsibility, right? Um, as a kid, our choices are pretty simple, you know, do I want vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream? Am I going to play with my siblings or I'm going to play with my video games? But now as you grow older, as you grow in maturity, your choices matter more, right? So you have to ponder things like if I speak up in class about something that I believe in and I'm passionate about, will people make fun of me? Um, will... Um, should I waste time on social media or should I do my schoolwork? Am I trying to avoid my work by doing all these different things, right? These are choices that you have to make now. Um, and happiness when we're younger was always easy to point, to pinpoint, right? And I see this in my kids right now. They're always thinking about toys and, um, getting treats and candy and stuff. They're always plotting about what they want for their next birthday and it's just toys they want they're always thinking about these toys that would make them so happy um but now you spend a lot of your time studying you have a lot more responsibilities um you're studying you're doing chores to help your parents some of you have to maybe watch younger siblings um you have to when we're not under quarantine you're going to sports practices and band and play practice and whatnot right so there's a trade-off with the more freedom that you have the more your happiness depends on your choices that you make and a lot of times in our lives we learn what it means to be human by learning from other humans right from our parents our grandparents our older siblings maybe and unfortunately, I think in our world right now, it's getting harder and harder to find an example of what it means to be a free and happy, truly happy person. I think TVs and movies and social media and politicians, celebrities on social media, they're exhibiting behaviors that only tie them down to sin like uh, greed and selfishness, pride and promiscuity, things like that. Um, According to what we see from our culture on a regular basis, happiness means doing whatever you want. And I remember I gave you guys um, a reflection a couple weeks ago and asked you, what is freedom? What do you think freedom is? What do you think happiness is? And you guys said, it's to be able to do what I want. Um, and I think what we see in our culture is that people want to have fun and they want to avoid the complications and the consequences that come with their choices. Um, you might know somebody in your life who puts a lot of emphasis on success. Their happiness comes from being successful in their career or having a nice house and a brand new car. Um, how many people do we know who seem to have what they want and need, but they still complain? They still seem frustrated? They still... Uh, treat people in unkind, or you might even know people who seem like they are not even capable of having healthy relationships because they're just sabotaging or acting extremely immature. Um, and I don't want you guys to think that I think the world is bad, that all of everything is doomed, people don't know what it's like to be happy. That's not true at all. But I think that in general, our culture and our society is confused about what makes a person matter and what really makes them happy. And so um, I struggled with this when I was your age. It's easy to get the idea that our worth lies in what we look like, that our worth lies in how well we perform at school or sports. Our worth lies in um, how much we own or how much money we can make. But and I think that can be confusing for ourselves when we're trying to always chase this ideal or this standard. But God, the good news is that God loves us too much to leave us confused and to leave us without answers and without a path for us to show how we can really um, achieve freedom and happiness. So at the incarnation, right, that word incarnation, when Jesus became flesh, God the Son 
actually became one of us and opened a way for us to end up even better off than Adam and Eve had started. So God did not stop helping humanity after the time of Jesus either. He continues to pour out his grace and his help for us even now to help us to have the wisdom and the understanding of what it means to be human, what it means to live a life of happiness and freedom. And so he gives us people. God uses people to inspire humanity. And these are the saints, holy people who who show up and show us what it means to live for the Lord, what it means to be unselfish. Um, and so God inspired Saint John Paul II with a collection of talks called Theology of the Body. Okay, so um, the Pope usually gives talks every Wednesday at his Angelus in Rome. And for years, the theme of St. John Paul II's were called Theology of the Body. And he was simply really just trying to ask two big questions. Who am I and how should I live? And so this is a teaching. It's a guide that reveals how our bodies, our physical bodies, can express the truth about our invisible souls and our invisible um, destination, right? It helps us to know that you have the freedom to choose how to live your life, and you have been created for love. You have been created to be in a loving relationship with God and with others. And Theology of the Body also helps us to understand that the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit um, is a loving relationship, that they love e each other eternally. And all of our relationships are supposed to um, kind of model themselves after that perfect uh, unifying love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there is hope you can be a confident and happy person about who you are. You can be confident about who you are. You can be confident about where you're going. Uh, I think it's really easy for us to be nervous or scared or not sure what the future holds. But we have a loving Father in heaven who um, does not abandon us. There might be times where we feel like he is abandoning us, but he is always with us. Um, and you can have good relationships with other people. It's possible by the grace of God. Um, he He wants us to have loving relationships that are not based off of power or manipulation, but um, true freedom and true love. And so God offers you a destination better than anything the world can offer. And he gave us Jesus to be a guide along the way. So let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we thank you so much for inspiring uh, John Paul II to give us this teaching to help us to know deep in our hearts that we are loved, that we were created good just by being created by God. Uh, we are good. There's nothing that we have to do to prove our worth to our Father in heaven. And we just praise you and we thank you, Lord Jesus. And I just pray um, that we will all know this in the depths of our heart and help us this week as we continue to do our work and to give you glory in all things. And Mother Mary, we love you and we ask that you will continue to pray for our families and for our health and for this whole situation in the world. Mother Mary, we trust in your Son and in your intercession. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. All right. Have a good day, guys.